In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install Pioneer tools on your flat fender. So this is a reproduction for GPW tub, so a Willys MB tub would be exactly the same. It comes with indents, so up here would be the one for the shovel, and down here would be the one for the axe. Um, if you have a CJ2 and you want to add these tools, you would have to cut and weld in a panel with these indentations. You would also need a sheath back here. Um, an MB or GPW will probably already have this. This is from Kaiser Willys. This is a little axe sheath, so this can be added um, to any flat panel, really. And we're going to cover the straps, the footman loops. I'm also going to be installing um, this beautiful axe from Kaiser Willys. So it's a pretty nice piece, and that's going to go right here later on in the video. And I'm going to be using this shovel. This um, is an old shovel I've had since I was a kid. It's been on all of my Jeeps at one point or another, so we're going to be sticking uh, with this shovel for this project, but the locations of the brackets will not change. There are two different types of hardware that we're going to use for this project, the larger one being a 5 16 18 countersunk slotted head screw, 3 quarter inch long. The smaller one is a number 10 by 24 half inch long. That is also a countersunk slotted screw. Um, I like to use an 11 30 seconds drill bit for that. So that's two sizes up from a 5 16 but that gives you a little wiggle room um, for adjusting things and it just helps the bolt go in and we're going to use a lock washer on the back. So that's just how I like to do it. And then, uh, so that's the main size. That'll be for the rear axe bracket the front axe bracket and the front shovel bracket. Uh, the little holes for the fit footman loops, I use a 3 16 bit, um, but the and proper hardware for the footman loop should sit flush like that. Just a little countersunk machine screw. Um, that's all it is to it. I will be showing you several different uh, exact measurements today, but please, I want you to double check everything with your tub and your tools to make sure it fits. So whether you're ordering um, brand new reproduction axes and shovels, you're using new old stock, or one that grandpa had on the farm, I want you to use the measurements I give you as uh, a rough guide, but I think it's really important, especially with these old Jeeps, um, to just check things as we go. So here's the reproduction axe from Kaiser Willys, and this is the correct style axe for an MB or GPW. It has sort of the, the Fawn's foot or Fawn's hoof end on it. And this shape of the head, the thickness, it's, um, it's a correct reproduction, but if your ax is a tiny bit different, like I have this old ax here in the shop, very similar head design, head size. The thickness is a little bit different and the shape of the handle is slightly different. So that's going to dictate how far up into the, the sheath it goes, how deep into the tub indents, the handle rides. So it, it's all dependent on the shape of your tools. And I wouldn't want you to drill something and uh, just go on these stock measurements and have it not fit correctly. Same goes for shovels. They're all a little bit different. Um, this shovel from the tip to the handle is 37 inches. Uh, which is really close to the original GPW or MB shovel. So just keep that in mind. Um, also, the angle of the head, you'll notice on a, a new old stock GPW shovel, has a really steep angle in and then it kicks back. And that's what helps it um, ride correctly in this groove without sticking out from the body a lot. So that's why I want you to double check all your measurements. Um, the measurements for this tub, the one I'm showing you, I've done a lot of research, read forums, and looked at some actual original tubs to get these as close as possible. Um, but please check your measurements with your tools. I'm going to start with the axe sheath. That's this little guy right here. I have this new one stuck on my original just so you can see it better with a magnet. I'm going to be basing all these measurements off this seam in the tub. So this is kind of our reference point for a lot of our measurements because our only other option is the wheel arch or the front fender and both of, both of those are angled so it's not ideal. The sheath is exactly six inches across. 
so I don't know if you can see I have a mark for center so find the center of your sheath touch it off to the seam and the original location of that should be 15 and a half inches so it's exactly 15 and a half from the seam to the center of the sheath the sheath needs to be parallel to the bottom edge of the tub so this is a pretty easy one we have a good reference point you're going to hook your tape measure on the bottom check both sides it should be exactly six inches up from the bottom now that's assuming the bottom edge of your tub is not damaged but that should be a pretty good spot to go from now it's time for the footman loop holes that's these three footman loops that go around the axe sheath they are five eighths of an inch out from the edge of the sheath all the way around and notice I'm not using the end of the tape measure it's really hard to get an accurate measurement when you're dealing with the blade so I slide over here you can pick any inch increment and come over five eighths of an inch and mark it like that what I recommend doing is measuring five eighths over there and measuring five eighths over here Then taking some type of a straight edge and striking a line like that because once again we can't really use this as any type of a reference point the edges of the sheath are square so we'll do the same thing over here five eighths five eighths of an inch scribe a line down and that'll give us our reference to drill the holes for the upper footman loop are a little bit more tricky because if you notice this has a bit of an arch to it but it's still no big deal so remember we made a center mark on our sheath at three inches because it's six inches all the way across and so I want you to take your straight edge and continue that mark up onto your tub the spacing between the holes of a footman loop is two and one eighth so that means from the center line we're going to come out inch and a sixteenth from both sides so one and a sixteenth and mark a line there so where our inch and a sixteenth line is we're going to come up five eighths of an inch and that's where that mark would be same thing over here five eighths of an inch and mark it so it's a little hard to show you since the holes are already here but just remember five eighths out and they're an inch or two and an eighth spanning the distance once you have everything marked you're going to take that 3 16 drill bit and drill all these look how fast that was so 3 16 is what i recommend but check your hardware before you drill i also i imagine i would recommend a center punch and starting with a a smaller bit and stepping up to 3 16 so it'll just give you a more clean hole and a better final result. I also recommend coming through with a countersink bit that really deburs and cleans off the hole. Since our fuel tank and seat have been removed, you have good access behind the tub to install the hardware. If you notice, I left these with the nickel finish. I recommend not painting or priming anything until everything's installed it's a little bit more work but the end result is better in case you scratch it or you need to redrill or move something um, we'll come back through and remove everything paint it make it look all nice now we're going to cover the measurements for the lower axe bracket once again we're going to base our measurements off the seam from the seam to the center of the bracket is 15 and a half. So if you remember that number, that's the center of our sheath. So this bracket should be directly in the center of that. You may have noticed there are four holes in this bracket and I only have two holes on the tub. So then there's uh, some unique history uh, having to do with the ax bracket. The early models, um, and I think some of the GPWs, they had what they called a two-hole bracket. So there were only two holes in this bracket. And um, at some point, uh, you'd have to talk to a military historian, but at some point they went to a four-hole bracket. So um, I've heard mixed reviews, but technically it should only have two bolts attaching this, even if it's a four-hole bracket. And what that does is gives you the option to slide the bracket up and down 
depending on the axe head. So if you notice, there's about an inch between these two, and just between the two axes I have, one slides up in almost an inch farther than the other one. So by doing that, GIs or farmers or whatever had the option to just take two bolts out, move this up, if they lost their axe, broke it, or had to change axes for some reason. So that's why I'm only going to put two in here. You could put four, that's totally up to you, but I don't think it's necessary. And the way you gauge if this is correct or not is so that when your axe is locked in there, like this, this outer bar right here should be parallel to the tub. So this is your tub face and this, you know, your bracket. If it's out here like that, it means your bracket's up too far and it can't squeeze. If it's more like that, it means you're down too low and the axe is going to rattle up and down. So keeping those two parallel like that, when the axe is in place, tight up in the sheath, is how you know you have the correct one. So I just want to talk about that because some of you are probably wondering why I'm only using two bolts. That's why. The correct original distance from the bottom of the tub up is an inch and a quarter. So I'll put the measurements up on the screen for this, uh, for the side measurement and up and down. So inch and a quarter and I'm using the 11 30 seconds drill. So we're going to have the strap holding it there. It should be tight so that it's not rattling around when you drive. I'm going to take a moment to show you the reason that we're using two holes and allows for adjustment and changing of axe heads. So here's a, just an old axe I have in the shop here. If I put that one up in there, I have a, a good inch gap there and that's no good. So let's pull it out, move these two bolts and try it again. So if you notice now, I'm on the other set of holes, slide the axe up in, close the clamp, it pushes it nice and snug up into there. By doing that, I'm still able to adjust it for two different axe sizes, and I didn't have to drill any unnecessary holes in the tub. As we move towards the front, we're going to install the front axe handle bracket. This job is relatively easy. If you notice uh, behind your step, there's a little tab here with a indent. So this tub obviously already has had the bracket installed, but let me show you a video here of what it would look like. This is on the passenger side. So we're going to drill right where that little circle is. For our first hole, we're going to use the seam on the tub again as a reference point. Come over eight and a quarter and drill your hole. And make a line so you'll have a pencil line going up from the bottom and we're going to be drilling in the center of this little tab where that hole is that I already showed you. For the upper hole you're going to hook on the seam again and come over, make sure you stay on there, come over nine and a half. So nine and a half inches and make a small mark. If you notice this bracket isn't straight up and down, it leans forward so we need to also make our height measurement in order to find out where those lines intersect. So you can come back anywhere over here and make a mark at three inches and come forward and make another mark at three. Then take some sort of a straight edge and line up your marks. Scribe a line and we already have our mark this way. So if you didn't have a hole there that would make an X and we all know X marks the spot. Using a step drill method, so start with maybe like an eighth inch bit, move up to our 11 30 second size. To prepare the bracket, make sure you have two nuts threaded on. Um, you can really kind of just put them on about like that as far as you need to go, because uh, we will have to adjust this. After that, there's a lock washer. This is all included with the kit. Then um, you may have to bend, you know, squeeze it a little bit or open it up a little bit to make sure your holes line up. Uh, these are pretty close. Then on the back side, we're going to install another lock washer and a nut. This part is a little bit tricky because when you're under here, there's a flange bent over on the bottom of the tub, and then your floor is right there. So you really don't have a ton of room to work. So you slide the lock washer on, you kind of have to wiggle it around, and then the nut You'll have to use an open end wrench. You won't be able to get a socket on the bottom one. The upper one is much easier. It's inside the tub. And I'm just reaching through and putting another lock washer 
and a nut on there and I'm leaving it kind of loose so just getting it started on there part way just like that you can adjust how far out this is from the tub um, depending on the adjustment of the nut so you have a nut on this side and on the inside of the tub and you can bring that bracket in and out so at this point I like to take my axe uh, to get it in there you have to turn it sideways pass it through and then rotate it up when it's in the bracket properly it should be brought out to the front now I'm going to push it up into the sheath as it would be when it's clamped together. Once it's in place and you're happy with the location and the tightness of your brackets, you can slide the nut and washer to the tub. You can actually tighten everything up from the outside, so this will come in handy, especially on this lower nut. Once you're satisfied with the adjustment, you can slide the axe out of the way, so just remember to turn the handle and it'll slide right out. And now we'll have a lot more space to snug everything up. We only have one bracket remaining, and that's the front shovel bracket. This is the correct orientation for the bracket. If you notice, the tabs with the holes are pointed towards the rear of the vehicle. So when that sits flush, it gives the correct angle of this front piece for the shovel blade to fit in there. To get the first measurement for the front shovel bracket, we're gonna hook the tape on our tub seam once again, and you're gonna come over towards the front 19 and 1 8 of an inch. So you make your mark at 19 and an eighth. It's nice we have this step here. This bracket is straight up and down, so it makes things a little bit easier, and having the step gives us a good reference point. So come over 19 and an eighth, use a square on your step, scribe a line. If your square is not tall enough, just extend that up a little bit more. Now it's time to mark the height of our holes. So the lower hole, you're gonna make a mark at three and a quarter, and the upper hole is a mark at 10. So three and a quarter and 10. Before you drill, hold your bracket up, make sure it's in the correct orientation, and your intersecting lines should line up right in the holes on the bracket. Then take your drill, start at a small size, and work your way up to 11 30 seconds. Now's the easy part. Just take your slotted 5 16 18 screw, hold it from here. The, the upper bolt is inside the tub, so it's right kind of next to your clutch pedal. I'm installing a lock washer and a nut, just hand tight for now. Push it through, and this one is um, kind of, it's on the outside, so it's underneath, more like in the fender well area, so it's behind the rear fender, I'm reaching up from underneath. Now that we have all the brackets installed, it's time to put the strap kit on and mount our tools. I just wanna take a minute to talk about uh, quality of these parts. Um, this canvas strap is uh, nice and stiff. The uh, stitching on it looks really good. I like the black finish on the buckle and the straps are finished with a nice um, copper hammer on finishing end. Makes them a great addition to your Jeep. The kit comes with all three of the pieces that you need for your Pioneer Toolkit. Now would be a great time to take everything apart and paint it the way you want. If you remember in the earlier part of the video, we left everything finger tight, and now you're gonna see why. So we'll remove one screw from this footman loop. Make sure the, the remaining screw is loose enough that there's wiggle room around it. You're gonna take this shorter strap in your kit um, sometimes they're really stiff and you are going to have to squeeze that to make a little opening and pass that down through that footman loop. And if you notice, um, this is the smooth side so it doesn't have this little flap that goes towards the body and the buckle is facing out from the tub. Once that's on there, reinstall your hardware. You can push this out so away for now. We're going to move up to the top loop. And same thing, 
Just remove one of the screws, keeping the other one loose. And now we're gonna take the larger, longer bracket that came with your kit. See how tight that is? So just give it a squeeze like that and make space for the loop. Slide it through so the buckle is on top facing out and reinstall your screw. And the last but not least is the much longer strap that has no buckle on it. That is the forward shovel strap. Feed it through. Install your screw. And notice I have the smooth side facing outward again. So the back side with the flap here towards the vehicle. Now for the fun part. All our hard work is paying off. So I'll take my axe, turn it, pass it through, pull the bracket down, kind of get the steps out of the way, and stick it up in there. Pull the bracket up nice and tight. This one's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is the correct sequence and routing of the straps. So the axe goes on first, pass it through the bracket, so if you notice, there are um, some teeth in here. So you'll push that up, pass it through there. You're gonna pull downward and that pressure pulls the teeth down and it will engage them into the strap. These will work better as you use them. They'll kind of get broken in. So then you're left with this tab and you wanna make sure that you pass that up through just like that. That's how the axe is installed. Moving on to the shovel. So you just take your shovel and guide it into the front bracket. We're on to the last strap and the final step of installing your Pioneer tools. You're probably looking at this thinking, how does one strap in front of the handle keep pressure forward? So remember, this has to be um, having pressure forward on it at all times or it will fall out of the front bracket. So uh, it'll all make sense. So what we want to do is pull this strap through the handle, just like that. Then we're going to wrap it around. And if you can see that, I'm going, passing it under that strap in the same footman loop and pulling it tight like that. So that's the key right there. As you're doing it, try to kind of keep it in the center and pull it nice and tight. Then we're going to overlap. So if you see, I'm coming back this way and feeding it through that short rear strap. Whoops, bumped the camera. So now we pull everything tight. And as I'm pulling, it's actually cinch cinching the shovel forward. Then we take our tail strap, the leftovers, and pass it back through the buckle. Should be able to let go of that and keep it tight now. And any extra I pass back through that footman loop and kind of behind everything. So once you get it together, that's what it looks like. I want to do this for you one more time from the top so you really get a good view and idea how it's done. So through the handle, make sure you don't get any twists in your strap, behind the footman loop, back around the front, pull it nice and tight, Feed it through the buckle. Try to keep it lined up so it overlaps perfectly. Cinch it tight. Feed the tail back through the buckle. And any excess go behind the axe strap. There it is. Great job. You just successfully installed Pioneer tools on your Willys MB or Ford GPW. There'll be a link in the description and on the screen to another video um, that will show how to install this axe sheath on your tub if it doesn't already have one.